Hello class, this is Dr. Ben. We're going to finish up chapter 4 with one last application of the concepts of force and motion, and that is applied to the two-dimensional situation that we call projectile motion. And we can see in, in this diagram the signature of projectile motion. This is a kind of a strobe photograph, a, a motion diagram of sorts. This is a cyclist, and we can see the graceful arc pattern that the motorcycle is going in. So that's the signature of projectile motion. It's a simultaneous motion in both horizontal and the vertical directions. All right, so the object around us uh, undergo projectile motion. So things like baseballs, tennis balls, Olymp Olympic divers, all kinds of objects that move in simultaneously through the horizontal and the vertical direction undergo projectile motion. And projectile motion is essentially an extension of free fall, where instead of only having vertical motion under the influence of gravity, we add horizontal motion that has a constant velocity. And since projectile motion is based upon the concept of free fall, air resistance is neglected. And we can see from this, this picture of a bouncing tennis ball that the trajectory has this characteristic parabolic pattern, these humps that, that have a, a very graceful arc to them. All right, so projectile motion is a specific example of the general idea of combining two different motions together. And so this slide shows us two examples of that. And so in the first one, we have the propeller on the bottom of an outboard motor and if we're interested in focusing on a point on the edge of the propeller as the, pro as the motor is moving the boat forward, see that that point on the rim executes a circular motion and a linear motion at the same time. So those two motions together create this characteristic spiral pattern that we see in the top part of the slide. Down in the bottom part, we have this kind of whimsical example from a carnival where we have a kind of a merry-go-round where the riders are in a, a car that can rotate, but the cars are on a turntable that can rotate. And so in this situation, the, the person in the car experiences two different circular motions at the same time. A circular motion about the center of the car that they're riding in, and a circular motion about the center of the Ferris wheel, which is sorry, the merry-go-round, which is this point there I tried to mark in red, we can see that we get this kind of loop-to-loop -loop pattern that is a little bit repetition of, uh, the, of the flowers that you could make with an etch-a-sketch of an old-fashioned children's toy. All right, so projectile motion is a specific example of, the, of this combined motion. So we're going to consider the motion in a vertical plane where we have both horizontal and vertical motion happening simultaneously. Typically, a projectile is launched from the ground, as we see in this, in this diagram, and some of the parameters of the launch are the, are the launch speed and the launch angle, and here we also see the trajectory of the, of the particle. All right, so again, projectile motion is an extension of free fall, and this picture is a very dramatic example of that. And so we can see that the red ball and the yellow ball were both released um, from the same vertical position, but that the yellow ball has an original, an initial velocity in the x direction that the red ball does not have. And so while both of the, of the objects have the same pattern of the vertical motion that's influenced by gravity, we can see that the yellow ball also travels sideways as it falls. And so again, its trajectory has been into this kind of graceful arc, and that pattern is the characteristic of projectile motion. All right, so again, back to the, the long part of of a projectile motion. We've already seen this diagram where the object is launched with some initial speed and at some direction. And so that velocity vector has components or shadows along both the x and the y direction. 
And so since the angle was measured from the positive x-axis, the x component of the initial velocity would be proportional to the cosine, and the y component of the initial velocity would be proportional to the sine. And so we need to use our concept of vector components in order to resolve the initial velocity into components along our coordinate directions. Once we do that, then we can analyze the, the motion in both the horizontal and the vertical directions, realizing that although they're connected together because they're happening simultaneously, they are very different in their character. The vertical motion of a projectile is, is one in free fall, so it's influenced by gravity, whereas the horizontal motion is one in which the object is moving at a uniform pace, and so there is no acceleration in the horizontal direction. So these two motions are very different, but in projectile motion, they are occurring together. So when we use these facts in order to uh, analyze the motion of a projectile using the kinematic equations from the beginning of chapter, of chapter 4, we have to put in our initial conditions that the velocity components in the x and the y directions are found by, um, by finding the shadows in those coordinate directions. We also have our formulas for the acceleration in each direction, and then the three kinematic equations can be written down for both the x and the y motions. And the x the x motion is very is very simple because there's no acceleration. Then in the y direction we have two equations, and the third equation, if we wanted to use it, would represent the squares of the y velocity. All right, so before we leave this slide, let's take a, uh, one last look at this graph on the lower right-hand side. And this is a graph of the actual trajectory of a projectile that's launched and land from the same height. And so it's a motion diagram. These dots are equally spaced in time. And you can see that the velocity vectors have been drawn. So we notice, first of all, that the magnitude of the x component of the velocity is always the same. And so that's consistent with our idea that projectile motion consists of a uniform motion in the x direction. But in the y direction, we see the velocity component is changing. It gets smaller on the way up until it reaches zero at the turning point and then it gets larger on the way back down. But notice that since our starting and ending points are at the same height, we have this beautiful symmetry in the motion that the y components of the velocity at any elevation are in opposite directions. So they're in this coordinate system. They're positive on the way up, and then they're negative on the way back down. And since it takes the same amount of time for the object to rise as it does for it to fall, the, the speed is the same at a particular height, but only the direction of the velocity has changed. All right, so just to summarize quickly, we've learned that projectile motion is an extension of, of free fall to a situation where we have both horizontal and vertical motion happening simultaneously. The horizontal motion is uniform, so it occurs with no acceleration, and the vertical motion is influenced by, by gravity. And projectile motion is a specific example of a general situation where we have the combination of two different motions happening simultaneously.